Good morning. Welcome to Worship at Leap of Faith Church. I'm Virgie Holbrook. I'm the pastor of the church, and I'm glad that you're here today. If you haven't already checked in in the comment column, I hope that you'll do that. If you need to worship anonymously, or if you just prefer to worship anonymously, you know, you can surely do that. But if there's not a good reason uh, to be anonymous, please put your name in the comment column. It is fun to see who's here with us each Sunday morning. We do have a few announcements today. I have uh, been so excited to see the food that's coming in for the Lakeway Christian Community Resale Barn and Visions of Sugar Plums, two local nonprofits that uh, help families who need a little extra help with food uh, year round, but especially at this time of the year. My thanks to all who've already brought a whole variety of canned meats, peanut butter, and so on. The foods most needed are listed in our newsletter, and if you if you'll take a look at that and, and uh, prayerfully consider participating in this mission project of Leap of Faith. We will be glad to receive food up until February 7th, Sunday, February 7th, and then we'll deliver the food so it can get to those who need it the most. If you have questions, you're welcome to give me a call, 903-821-4505. I'm also excited about projects coming up during Lent, which begins on February 17th. Uh, you'll be hearing more about a butterfly project, and you'll be hearing more about our virtual mission trip. We're working with SPJ, a nonprofit in El Paso, to build a family in Juarez for a family in need. Uh, build a house in, in Juarez for a family in need. It's uh, an exciting opportunity for us, and I look forward to telling you more as time, as time gets closer. Um, of course, if you'd like to know more about Leap of Faith, we do have our website, mylofc.org, and our newsletter as well, which is an excellent way to keep up with what's going on at the church. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the comment column, I hope that the form that allows you to subscribe to the newsletter is there. It's also a way to submit prayer requests if you have any. Facebook, as I've said before, does have a mind of its own, and sometimes that appears and sometimes it doesn't. But yeah, if it's there and you'd like the newsletter, please uh, please use that form to ask for it. If it's not there, again, my number is 903-821-4505. Call me or text me and let me, let me know that you'd like to be on our newsletter list. Uh, we have the Leap of Faith Church Facebook page, page as well. A very good way to get to know more about what all is happening here. And I hope that if you haven't liked that page that you will do it after the worship service. Those are the announcements that I have to share this morning. So let's get after it. Let's get down to worshiping. Will you remember this? You are loved and you are wanted by our, by our Lord Jesus Christ. You are loved, you are wanted here at Leap of Faith Church. Remember this as well, would you? God is our rock. God, God is our salvation. God is our mighty fortress in all times and in all places. And that's the God who is with us right here, right now. That's the God that we are worshiping right here and right now. As we begin to worship, will you uh, enjoy the music of the Leap of Faith Band? Sand. 
His covenant, his oath is blood, supporting me against the flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Play it, Ray. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. Sinking sand. One more time. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. Sinking sand. Leap of Faith, of course, is an independent church not associated with any other local church or denomination. Early in our life, almost five years ago, we decided to adopt the Apostles' Creed, the historic confession of the Christian faith, as our own statement of belief. I invite you to join me now uh, in the Apostles' Creed, led today by John Gessick. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father Almighty, and will come again to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now will you take a moment to think back over the week just past, uh, the times when you felt very close to God and the times that you felt maybe not quite so close to God. There's no need to tell anyone else uh, about those times, either the good ones or the bad ones, but if you would name those to God now as we pray. God, we are afraid to tell you all the ways we've fallen off the track. They are too many and too embarrassing to name. And yet we believe what we've been told, that when we summon up the will to tell you the truth about what we've done, when we determine to live in a different way going forward, God, we believe in faith that you forgive it all. And so in silence now, we tell it all to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you be sure that when you have confessed, when I've confessed in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you're forgiven, and so am I. Amen. Joys and concerns today. Um, I ask your prayers as I do every Sunday for those who lead our world, our country, our communities, our schools, our churches. Please be faithful to pray for leaders everywhere, most especially those who've stepped into new roles of leadership in the United States of America, President Biden, Vice President Harris. Please be faithful to pray for these two as they, um, as they take over leadership of the United States of America. Please pray as well for all those connected with Leap of Faith Church who are ill or injured or suffering in any way. COVID-19 continues to, continues to be, um, unfortunately, a part of many of the lives of many of those here at Leap of Faith. I ask your continuing prayers for Penny's mother, Pam's daughter-in-law, uh, Pam's daughter-in-law's father and nephew, Kay's son, Derek, uh, other family members. Please pray for Ronnie and Scotty, Phil, Tiffany's brother, Jonathan, 
uh, Jerry's brother-in-law, Jack. Please pray for Don, for Deborah's mother, for Charlie's stepfather, Jack, and for Mary's friend, Zachary. All these people have, have been affected by COVID-19. Some of them are trying to get over it. Some of them are, are well on their way to complete recovery. Please pray for them. Please pray as well for all those who are heading up the vaccination program. What an undertaking that is. And I, I ask your prayers for God's guidance for these people. Please pray as well for these who are ill. Julie has asked our prayers for her daughter-in-law's father. He is on dialysis. Shad, who has the, the shingles, please pray for Ray as he recovers from an accident. Uh, please pray for uh, Kay as she seeks medical treatment, for Cheryl who is recovering from double knee surgery. We ask your continuing prayers for Dave and Gina's granddaughter Natalie who is undergoing chemotherapy, uh, Michelle's mother anticipating surgery, Ralph, Pat, Patty, Mary, Laurie. Please pray for all the all these who need need help with healing. Uh, other concerns as well. I ask again this week your prayers for First Presbyterian Church in Whitesboro. They are in the process of making important decisions for the life of their church. Uh, be faithful to pray for students, teachers, administrators in our schools, for health care workers everywhere, and for the homebound everywhere. Pray as well, if you will, for Hunter, Tyler, and Jessica, who serve our country in the military of the United States. Pray for those who are um, working together to put all the pieces in place for our virtual mission trip, the, the, the house building in Juarez. I pray, pray, if you will, for all those who are showing us how to be the church, those who are bringing food for our uh, collection of food for the resale barn and visions of sugar plums, a leap of faith band, and of course be faithful to pray for Brad Nixon and Summer Holbrook who produce our worship service. We are grateful to them for their faithfulness week after week after week in bringing this worship service to us. If you have joys, if you have concerns, would you add those to the comment column now? Um, and now let's pray. God, we have been hearing a lot of talk about unity these last few weeks. We've been hearing a lot of talk about unity these last few days, about bringing our country together. We want to do that, God, but we can't do it alone. We need you to help us. We need you to bring us together. But God, bring us together around the principles that Jesus embodied, humility, forgiveness, true sacrificial love. God, bring our world together. Bring our communities, our neighborhoods, our workplaces, our schools, bring them together. Bring our church, our churches, bring them together. Bring our families and friends together. Bring us together, God, but bring us together around the principles that Jesus embodied, humility, forgiveness, and sacrificial love. We do not ask and we do not want that you give us mindless agreement with each other. Unify us instead around righteousness. Wrong is wrong even when everyone agrees upon it. We don't want to unify around the wrong God, but around what's right, around what's good, around what's true as you have shown us these things in Jesus. Give us the patience and the plain good manners to work together toward this end listening to what others have to say and speaking our minds with diplomacy intact. God be with us as we try to do this for the purpose of being of use to you as you bring your great empire to be here on earth. Fill us with your light. Let us walk with Jesus in leading all the world to you, traveling together down paths that are bright and clear and unobstructed. We ask you to hear this prayer as well as the spoken and un and spoken prayers we lift to you. Those who are joyful, God, may their joys only increase, and those who are sorrowful, will you comfort them and heal them. And hear us now as we pray together with one voice the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. If you are if you are one who has been supporting Leap of Faith Church with generosity in whatever way you've chosen to do that, in whatever way you felt led by God to do that, please know how very grateful I am to you. Um, it's wonderful to see the, the food piling up to be given to those who need some extra help with food. Um, I'm thankful for all the ways that, that you are in ministry at Leap of Faith. My thanks as well to those who give financial offerings. If you'd like to serve the church in this way, there are several ways to do that. The PayPal button in our newsletter on our website, mylofc.org. Uh, we have a text to give option and you can see that number on our screen. It is 903-225-8774. There is, I hope, a giving button here on our Facebook page this morning. You're welcome to use that giving button, and you're welcome as well to use the time-tested method of writing a check to Leap of Faith Church, slipping it into an envelope and mailing it to 5615 North, Farm to Market 1417, Sherman, Texas, 75092. All that information is on the screen. You can also find it in uh, our newsletter as well as on our Facebook page. Again, thank you. And now let's pray. Thank you for the, each, of the, each of the gifts that have been given, God. Use them, please, to always and only to your glory. We're praying in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again this week, we are... We are reading from the Gospel according to Mark. Today we're up to chapter 6, and I'm going to read just one verse. It's chapter 6, verse 4, and then tell the story that's around that verse. Uh, as I read it, please remember, remember that Jesus is speaking to his friends, to his family, to people who have known him his whole life long. And this is the way that Mark chapter 6, verse 4 goes. Then Jesus said to them, those closest to him, friends and family who had known him since the beginning. Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. I ask God to bless this reading of God's Word. I had the most amazing experience a few days ago. I had the most amazing experience some of you know that Greg grew up here in the Rio, Rio Grande Valley, and so we go down to the Rio Grande Valley from time to time. We were there last week, and while we were there, we walked on, on the beach at South Padre Island. We have probably walked on that beach a zillion times over the years. It is as familiar to us as, well, the beach at Lake Texoma. But this time, walking that beach, we saw something that we had never, ever seen before, not in all the years that we've been walking the beach at South Padre Island. We saw starfish. We saw starfish on the beach, lots of them, lots of starfish that had been washed up with the tide. I'd never seen a live starfish, starfish on the beach before. I've never seen a live starfish on any beach before. And it was very, very, very cool to see all those starfish out there on the beach. And then as we were looking at the starfish, we started remembering a story, a story that we seem to hear, you probably heard it too, just everywhere 10 or 15 years ago. This story, it showed up in, in sermons, in speeches, in fundraising letters from all different kinds of organizations. I bet you know the story I'm talking about. I bet you could tell it yourself. It's the story about the little boy who was walking on the beach. He saw a bunch of starfish that had washed up on that beach starfish that were on the sand and in danger of dying. They're on the hot sand. What does the boy do? He starts picking up these starfish one by one and flinging them on, on back into the ocean. But a man comes by and a man comes by and says, son, there are thousands of starfish here on the beach. There are thousands of starfish washed up here. You cannot possibly make a difference. And what does the boy do? He picks up another starfish and he throws that starfish into the water and he says to that man, well, I made a difference to that one. 
Now, in all honesty, I've heard that story so many times that I am pretty tired of that story, and maybe you're pretty tired of that story too, but when I saw all those starfish out on the beach the other day, I thought of that story immediately, and I started picking up starfish and throwing them into the water. But here's the thing. I know that it's usually a mistake to interfere with nature. For example, while we were, were, were there in the valley, we also visited an alligator rescue sanctuary where we learned that if a wild alligator is fed by a human even just one time, the alligator begins to associate the humans with food and the outcome is not usually a good one for either alligator or human. So as I was throwing the starfish back into the water, I started asking myself if I was doing the right thing, if I was doing the right thing for the starfish. Maybe God in God's wisdom knows that it's better for starfish to spend some time on the sand of the beach. I am certain that there is someone somewhere who has made it his life's work or her life's work to study starfish, but I am not one of them just as there are those who have made it their life's work to study almost every kind of animal, but not me. With wild animals, it's hard to know the best way to help them. And here's the thing. The same thing is true of people, too. It can be so hard to know the best thing to do where people are concerned, where relationships are concerned, even relationships with our nearest and our dearest. And that's one of the things that our Bible story today is about. It's about how to get along with people, how to get along with others. So let's have a closer look at that story now to see what it has to tell us about that subject, about getting along with others. Here's the background. Jesus has been sailing back and forth across the Sea of Galilee to different destinations around the Sea of Galilee. Today, though, Jesus leaves the sea behind and he returns to his hometown there in Nazareth. Now, Jesus' ministry has really taken off. He is no stranger these days to crowds and commotion. I don't know exactly why Jesus decided at this point to go back home. An earlier visit back home had not gone very well with his, with his family. His mothers and his brothers were feeling perhaps a little iffy about what it was that Jesus was doing. Who knows? I don't know. but. But maybe Jesus went home hoping to mend fences with his family. It's not entirely clear. What is clear is that on his visit home, Jesus went to teach in the synagogue on the Sabbath. Though sources differ on what the population of Nazareth was at this time, it was surely a small town. And while Jesus had been away for a while, he hadn't been away for long. People in Nazareth they knew Jesus. They had watched Jesus grow up. They knew his family. They could no doubt have easily directed his, a stranger to find his family home. Just go on straight ahead and turn left at the first crossroad maybe. As far as the people in Nazareth were concerned, Jesus, well Jesus was just Jesus. Jesus was just the carpenter in town except that now he's gone away and now he's back. Jesus is back and he's teaching and he's teaching with such astonishing wisdom. And word is going around about these miracles that Jesus has been doing, not in Nazareth, but on down the road. And you'd think that everyone would be thrilled to pieces about the hometown boy who is doing them proud, but you would be wrong. They aren't thrilled. They are not thrilled, they are offended, because they think to themselves, who does he think he is? Hasn't he gotten maybe a little bit too big for his britches? That's what they think. It can be so hard to know the best thing to do where other people are concerned, especially when we're in disagreement with them. Where relationships are concerned, even relationships with our nearest and dearest, it can be so hard. So hard to know what to say, whether to say anything at all. It can be so hard to know what to do, whether to do anything at all, when we're in conflict with others. What Jesus does say to these people, his friends, folks he's known just forever, to people who, who many of them Jesus has long known and no doubt long loved. 
what Jesus does is acknowledge to them that it's hard for people who have known someone in one role to accept them in another. Jesus is amazed that these his close friends can't summon up any faith in him, but he does acknowledge the difficulty of the situation with a few well-chosen words. Prophets are not with honor, he says, except in their hometown and with their own kin and in their own house. And then Jesus goes on to do what he can, no miracles, a few healings. But Jesus doesn't stick around Nazareth. He moves on. What isn't part of the story today is that the rift with his family is healed eventually. Eventually, his family, they come to understand exactly who Jesus really is. They come around to faith in him, not just as a family member, but as the Lord of all creation, the Savior of all of humankind. But at this juncture, at this point in the story, Jesus is amazed as any of us are when our family doesn't have faith in us. Jesus soft pedals his disappointment, and he continues on, though, with the work that he's been called to do. So that's the story we have today. What are we going to do with that story? Well, here's a thought. In the course of a week, I talk to a lot of people. Mostly today the topic is COVID, but truth to tell a close runner-up, it's relationships. The stress of the last 10 months, it has taken a toll, a terrible toll, on the right relationships of, of many of us. No matter what decision has been made about how to get through the pandemic, there is frequently some part of the family that disagrees with that decision. And then there's another part of the family that's heartbroken by the decision itself or by the dissension it's caused. And for those who are working from home or retired and not going out much, there's the weight of the near constant contact with others with whom we're sharing our house. It can be hard. It can be hard over the months seeing each other all day, every day, even while it's also a blessing. These days, there's a stress on relationships for those who are going to work when co-workers differ on what health guidelines should be in place or when customers or clients have expectations that are different from those our workplace has decided on. And of course, it is not just the pandemic. This whole election season, now blessedly over, has tested and tried many of us as, as neighbors have disagreed about issues as trivial about where to put the yard signs and as significant as the outcome of those elections. Frankly, my friend and my friends and my considered professional opinion, a whole lot of us are suffering. We are truly suffering from some pretty damaged relationships these days, in addition to or as a result of all that's going on in our world. For me, it's helpful to remember that not only Jesus himself have relationship problems with officialdom, but also relationship problems with his very own family and friends. Our fully divine Savior had his share of fully human problems for sure. Jesus had relationship problems just like you and just like me. And you know what? The story today tells us that not even Jesus could work any miracles with them. He could choose wise words, some honest words well spoken, and go on about his business, which is just what he did. As your pastor, I'm in the privileged position of knowing quite a bit about your life. What I know for sure is that humans being human, relationships are often tricky, more so now than ever before. What the Bible tells us is that if we're going to follow Jesus, we'll need to be going with him in the direction of dealing with others gently. And you remember how that starfish story goes? about how we can't save all the starfish, but maybe it's enough to make a difference to even one. Well, the same thing holds true of our relationships, too. Even following Jesus, we, might, we may not be able to save all of our relationships, but it might make a difference to even just one. Amen. Thank you so much for coming to worship today. I'm looking forward to the time when I can see you face to face and not through the lens of this camera. I know that we are blessed to have this means of worship uh, throughout these last 10 months. Whoever would have thought it could be 10 months. I know we're fortunate to have this way to worship, but I am so much looking forward to seeing you again on Sunday morning. 
and I'm hoping and I'm praying that it won't be very long before we can do that safely once more. Uh, please keep that in your prayers as I'll keep it in mine. If you joined us late and haven't checked in this morning, would you do that now? Leave your name in the comment column. And if you have uh, made a decision about following Jesus, if you'd like to be baptized or if you are ready to join Leap of Faith Church as our newest member, please give me a call, 903-821-4505, and we'll work out a way for those things to happen. Um, I would love to be your pastor, and Leap of Faith would love to be your church. I hope whether you formalize that relationship or not, that if you do need a pastor, that you will always feel free to call on me. I will do my best to help you. 903-821-4505. Thank you again for coming. Finally, we close. Get up and go. Get up and go. Share good news. Take every precaution to protect your health and the health of others but throw caution to the very wind in sharing the love of Jesus Christ with everyone you meet, some way, somehow. Amen. Hope you'll stick around to enjoy the music of the Leap of Faith Band, and I hope you will go in peace to serve God and your neighbor in all that you do. Have a good week. Christians, we have met to worship and adore the Lord our God. Will you pray with all your power while we try to preach the word? All is vain unless the Spirit of the Holy One comes down. Christians pray and holy blessings will be showered all around. Christians see poor sinners round you slumbering on the brink of woe. Death is coming. Hell is moving, can you bear to let them go? See our fathers and our mothers and our children sinking down. Christians pray and holy blessings will be showered all around. was lost in sin but Jesus took me in and then a little light from heaven filled my soul it bathed my heart in love and it wrote my name above and just a little talk with Jesus made me whole let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer will turn in, and you know a little fire is burning, you will find a little talk.
talk with Jesus makes it right. Some days my path grows drear without a ray of cheer. And then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of day. The mist of sin may rise and hide the starry sky. Just a little talk with Jesus clears the way. Let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer wheel turning, and you know a little fire is burning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Let's hear it, guys. Let's sing together. Let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer wheel turning, and you know a little fire is burning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. One more time. Let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer wheel turning, and you know a little fire is burning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Yes, it does. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Oh yeah. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right.